Hi, this is Texas Dara, back home after spending another summer in England, and I'm here to do a quick intro to what is going to be the nerdiest video I have ever done on my channel. I'm going to compare the cost of British and American groceries by first taking you on a little shopping trip at a British supermarket chain, Tesco, and then comparing the prices of all the items I bought with products bought at Kroger, an American supermarket chain. I have spent dozens of hours compiling this video, filming, editing, calculating, spreadsheets, online research, etc. Back in my career as a marketer in the food industry, I would have gotten paid big bucks to do this analysis. But now I'm a retired marketer with a little YouTube channel. So please pay me by giving this video a thumbs up or making a nice comment or even subscribing if you find it interesting, helpful, or at least entertaining. Thank you so much. Now let's let Gloucestershire Dara take us shopping. I've been asked about cost of living differences between the US and the UK. And one thing that people seem to be interested in is the cost of groceries specifically. So I'm gonna tackle that in today's video. I'm here in front of Tesco <laughs> in the wind. <laughs> And I'm going to be going in and buying kind of a typical shopping basket full of groceries. And then I will compare the cost of all those items versus what they would cost at Kroger in Dallas, Texas. Like any good grocery shopper, I'm going to begin my shopping trip in the produce section. Well, let's go look at the cost of strawberries. These fine British strawberries from West Sussex are two pounds 30 for a 400 gram punnet. Before I show you the price comparison, here's a quick peek behind the scenes to view all the math I did for every set of products in this video, converting from imperial to metric measurements and converting currencies to make an equivalent data point to compare the price gap and see if the British product was more or less expensive than the American one. So let's jump into our first example, strawberries. Doing all that complicated math, the result was the British strawberries are 6% more expensive than the American ones. Bananas are one pound one pence per kilo. American bananas are 49 cents a pound. And when you do the conversion, it means those British bananas are 13% more expensive. Easy peeler mandarins are two pounds 50 for a 600 gram bag. Back in the States, looking at a similar item, we have a three pound bag of these mandarin clementine oranges for $4.49, which makes the British ones 53% more expensive. At this point, I was kind of freaking out because I know that I felt like I was spending less money on produce in Britain. And the first few items were all more expensive once I did the conversions, but fasten your seatbelts. Things are about to change. Fresh broccoli is one pound 92 per kilo. Buying broccoli by the pound in the States is 179 for a pound, making the British broccoli 41% cheaper. British carrots, a one kilo bag is only 50p. A two pound bag of carrots in the States is $2.49, which makes the British carrots a whopping 78% cheaper. And these nice bell peppers in red, green, yellow, or orange are only 55p per pepper. This one didn't surprise me at all. When you buy bell peppers in the US, the green ones aren't that expensive, but I always buy red, yellow, or orange, and they're crazy expensive, like $1.49 each one. So yes, the British peppers were 55% cheaper. These cherry tomatoes are one pound for a 300 gram packet, but these are the really good ones. The sugar bell tomatoes, they're kind of small cherry tomatoes. They they are one pound 80 for 220 grams. To try and keep this an apples to apples equivalent, if you pardon the metaphor, I'm comparing the really fancy cherry tomatoes in Britain with the similarly really fancy cherry tomatoes in the States. And the British ones were 15% cheaper. These packages of both red and green grapes 
500 grams for one pound 90. I could not find American grapes that were both red and green packed in the same container, so I just went for red grapes. And looking at equivalent products, the British ones were 21% cheaper. This bag of baby potatoes is one pound 20 for one kilo, although it's actually on sale for 79p right now. Again, it was really hard to find an equivalent, but the closest thing I could find in the States for these small potatoes were the store brand Kroger new potatoes at $3.99 for a one and a half pound bag. That made the British ones 75% cheaper. And if you fancy making some pesto or insalata caprese, a pot of basil is one pound 90. I actually went and looked at the store at the size of the basil plant in Kroger and it looked a lot smaller than the ones in Tesco. So when I did my equivalent, I multiplied the price of the American basil by one and a half times. British basil, 49% cheaper. A lot has been said about how American bread is just not good and it's kind of true, I'm sorry to say. So let's look at some good bread here in the UK. One thing I've noticed is that seeded breads are really popular here, way more popular than they are in the States. And they are delicious and nutritious. This is Ian and my favorite new bread. It's Tesco Finest brand and it's wholemeal seeds and grains. And it's 135 per loaf which is 800 grams. The bread aisle is so different in the US than it is in the UK. Most of the bread in the bread section is this kind of sandwich bread, which is not very healthy or very good. And it's full of preservatives. And the honey wheat really is not whole grain. In order to get bread that is more healthy, you need to shop in this section where things actually have whole grains. It's hard to find something that's equivalent to what we buy in the UK because the store brand, private selection is the Kroger store brand. The store brand has whole wheat, but they don't have anything with seeds. And then this is a really popular brand. It has whole grains, but, oh, actually this is new. They do have a whole grain with seeds. So this might be the closest to what we buy in England and it's $4.99 for a loaf. This is a biggie. I did actually buy that Pepperidge Farm whole grain with seeds bread and it's pretty good. The slices are huge, but it's pretty good bread. Not as good as the Tesco bread though. And that Tesco bread, 72% cheaper. With our bread, we need some butter. So here we have some Tesco brand regular salted butter and it's 179 for 250 grams. American butter is also pretty expensive, so store brand butter, comparing American and British, the British butter was 6% cheaper. Our favorite kind of jam, wherever we are in the world, is Bon Maman. Here is the raspberry conserve. Normally, it's £3.30 for 370 grams, but it's actually on sale for only 260 now. I was not surprised to see that with the American jam being about six and a half bucks for a jar, the British jam was 39% cheaper. Although I have to confess, when we first got to England this summer, this exact jam was on sale for two pounds a jar and I stocked up a ton. I forgot to film honey in England, but I really wanted to show this comparison because it's a big deal. We love honey and it's crazy expensive in the States. This comparison shows both of these little plastic bottles are 340 grams, a pound and a half in Britain and four and a half bucks in the States, making the British honey 60% cheaper. These store brand free range eggs medium size are one pound 50 for a six pack i'm going to show you now why it's hard to compare eggs between countries obviously our eggs are kept in the refrigerated section here and we have these cage free eggs that are store brand we don't have them in six packs like they do in england so i'll just equivalize for the fact that they're sold in dozen but one thing is it says cage free it does not say free range they have other eggs that are called free range and then these are the regular store brand eggs 
that don't say anything about free range or cage free, which means they're kept in cages and that's gross. So the American eggs come in a dozen, but the British ones were 10% more expensive. Let's compare prices on two different kinds of cheese. Here is an extra mature or sharp cheddar. And for 400 grams, that is three pounds. The Kroger brand cheddar cheese is $2.49 for eight ounces. It's the orangey kind of Wisconsin style cheddar. That makes the British cheese 17% cheaper. Although knowing what both of these cheeses are like, I would say the British cheese tastes better. Then let's also look at the double Gloucester. That is two pounds 85 for 200 grams. I'm looking to see what English cheeses they have. They used to have double Gloucester, but it looks like they don't anymore. But there is a Cotswold cheese and some aged cheddars and Winsleydale, of course, and Stilton. I was disappointed that I couldn't do a comparison of double Gloucester because they no longer sell it at Kroger, but this just shows you how expensive the imported British cheeses are. Wensleydale with cranberries is 55% cheaper by weight in Britain than it is in the States. Something I love to buy is fresh mozzarella. So here we have the Galbani brand, which is for a 125 gram ball of fresh mozzarella, it's two pounds and it comes packed in water. There's also the Creamfields brand, which 210 grams, only 69 pence, which is crazy. This fresh mozzarella is 80% cheaper than the equivalent American store brand. And of course we need to talk about milk. So I'm going to look here at the semi-skimmed milk, which we call 2% or low fat in the States. And that semi-skimmed milk is one pound 45 for four pints or 2.3 liters. Because we have the whole crazy thing going on between the US and the UK where pints are not the same number of ounces and gallons are hopelessly confusing, I decided to do this all metric. So here are the prices for British and American milk shown in liters and the UK milk is 18% cheaper. The hummus is good and it's inexpensive. One pound 50 for a 300 gram tub. 10 ounces of American hummus is almost four bucks and that makes the British hummus about 55% cheaper. Here's a nice boneless salmon side or fillet or filet. Uh, that is 18 pounds 50 per kilo. Salmon is expensive in both places. In the States, it's about $15 a pound, and that makes the British salmon about a third less expensive. These chicken fillets, these chicken breasts, which appear to be free range chicken, cost seven pounds 50 for 650 grams. I tried to find an American chicken, which would also be free range so that it was an equivalent comparison. And it did seem that the British chicken was about 3% more expensive. Not very much of a difference. A British beef fillet steak is eight pounds for 210 grams. I was expecting the British beef to be more expensive, but for filet mignon, it was actually 44% less expensive. A sirloin steak is four pounds 60 for 227 grams. That's very specific. When I compared the organic grass-fed sirloin steak, it also was more expensive than it is in Britain. Britain was 41% cheaper. Minced beef that is only 5% fat is three pounds 49 for 500 grams. I couldn't compare the exact same kind of minced beef to ground beef because the mince was 5% fat and in the States it's 7% fat, but this was as close as I could get and it's 45% cheaper in Britain. A whole leg of lamb is 13 pounds per kilo. Okay, this is funny. I could not find leg of lamb at Kroger. When I searched on leg of lamb in the Kroger website, all that came up was a Lego 
Lamborghini race car set. So we're not going to be able to do that comparison. I decided instead to just look at lamb chops. And not surprisingly, they were a lot less expensive in Britain, about 52%. Texas Dara here again to pop in and say, let me know what is surprising you about this video. And if there are any products where you think I bought the wrong thing, tell me what I should have bought. Here's our favorite sauces we've been using this summer. The teriyaki sauce, one pound 50 for 150 mil. Teriyaki sauce was one thing that was less expensive in the US. Although again, I've tried this product and it's really not as good as the British one, even though the British one is 38% more expensive. If you want some chicken tikka masala, that's three pounds for a 420 gram jar, unless you buy it on sale. And then of course it's a better deal. I was able to compare the same brand, Patox, in the US as the UK, a lot more expensive in the States, 62% less expensive in Britain. And mango chutney is four pounds 10 for 530 grams. Unless you want the store brand, that's only one pound 40 for 230 grams. Even though I always buy the store brand chutney, I couldn't find it in the States. So this is Sharwood's brand chutney in Britain compared to Patak brand in Texas. The British one was almost 50% less expensive. Coleman's dry mustard is two pounds 30 for 57 grams. Good old Coleman's dry mustard from Norfolk was six and a half bucks for a four ounce container in Texas, making the British pack 15% cheaper. Now let's talk about ice cream. Oreo ice cream is three pounds 50 for 480 milliliters. I was not surprised that the British Oreo ice cream was a lot more expensive, 90% higher. And good old Ben and Jerry's, that's an American product, is five pounds 15 for a 465 milliliter carton. I was surprised that Ben and Jerry's ice cream, another American brand, was actually less expensive in Britain, 6% lower. Let's do some toiletries. Colgate toothbrushes in the 360 degree style are two pounds 50, normally five pounds. I thought both of these Colgate toothbrushes were really expensive. The UK was 10% higher. My favorite are these Pro toothbrushes. They're Tesco store brand, but they're extra soft for sensitive gums. And they are only 75p. This is where we see a big difference. When you look at the store brand sensitive toothbrushes, the British one is 57% cheaper than the US. Similarly, you can get Sensodyne brand toothpaste, the rapid relief stuff. 75 milliliter is five pounds normally, on sale for three pounds right now. Comparing the same brand of sensitive toothpaste, Sensodyne Rapid Relief, British one was 11% more expensive. But the Tesco store brand complete sensitive toothpaste is only one pound and they don't bother with all that extra packaging. This was the only similar item I could find at Kroger, the Kroger store brand that compares to Sensodyne, and it was $4.29 for a tube of toothpaste. That makes the British store brand sensitive toothpaste 68% less expensive than the American one. As I wrap up this video, I have a few important caveats about how I did the comparisons. First of all, obviously exchange rates vary constantly. One thing that's obvious is that there are so many more store brands in Europe than there are in the US. I worked in the food industry for 30 years and can tell you that's always been the case, but there are lots more store brand products available now in the US than there used to be years ago. I tried to buy what I actually buy when I'm shopping, but as you saw a couple times when I couldn't get a store brand equivalent in the States, I had to just use the branded product in the analysis. Speaking of brands, I did include a couple American brands and British brands just so that we could see if the theory holds that a brand is going to be more expensive when it's not in the country of origin. But that wasn't always the case. Now let's look at the total cost of the two shopping baskets. In Britain, it was 122 pounds, and in the US, it was $212. After equivalizing, it was 32% cheaper to shop in Britain versus America. If you're interested in seeing more shopping videos, I've done several other ones on my channel. 
I did two videos in which I did full shopping trips in the US and the UK since I live in both countries. And you can see one video compares high-end stores, what those shopping trips were like, and the other video compares low-end grocery shopping and what those stores were like. So you can check those out if you're interested. I also did several videos where I chose specific categories in the store so that you can see what's it like shopping for sugar in England versus sugar in the US. I chose several categories that as someone who shops in both places a lot seemed pretty different to me. So I will link to all those videos in the description. Thanks so much for watching this video and do something good in the world today.